I love those large butter beans and I use them very often. I drain them out, a little can of butter beans, and you add some garlic to it, you get some onion to it, a little bit of herbs, parsley, chives, whatever you have, you know, salt and pepper, of course, lemon juice, and a little bit of mustard, French mustard, this way, olive oil, and that's it. You have a great dish here that often I serve as an accompaniment to meat or even to fish, but more often than not, I just serve it like that as a first course kind of canapé. And it's great to eat this way. It's healthy, it's delicious. Butter beans canapé, make your pantry work for you. I'm Jacques Pépin, and this is Fast Food My Way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries. We do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments. Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. I have spinach flavors today with a tropical finish. This is the menu of today. And I started already. I have a beautiful chorizo here. This is Spanish chorizo. You know, very reddish. There is a lot of paprika in there, and that's why it gets reddish like that. Very flavorful. And I browned this for about four or five minutes, and I add some chicken leg with it, without the skin. And we're going to continue with the whole garnish of the paella. The paella, of course, is the classic Spanish dish. You know, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole meal in itself. And uh, I love to do that summer and winter. So onion in it, the proportion are relatively important, but at least I would say, uh, yeah, half a cup, three quarter, a cup of onion in there. And then a lot of other things are going in. Mushroom, so about a cup of mushroom as well. You can have wild mushroom as well as, uh, as, well as domestic mushroom. And again, cut coarsely like this. You know, it's not very, very important for that. Now we have shellfish with this that will be cooked at the end. But for the time being, we'll start with all of the vegetables. So first, browning the, the sausage and the chicken. Then we continue with the vegetables, so onion. Now I have three cloves of garlic here. I'm gonna add the garlic, just crush it, you know, and very coarsely, coarsely sharp. That will go in there. I always get at my market also some red salsa, so-called, and it's pretty spicy, and I very often use it in ingredients like this. And of course, they are the rice. It's a paella rice, you know, which is a short grain, and that should go next because you want to mix it in, in the fat in the bottom of this. You want to separate it like that, mixing with the fat. And of course, the advantage of that type of thing is that you can start, you know, you can start earlier browning your chicken, doing all of this, and like 30 minutes before your guests are getting there, then you can add all of the rest of what I'm doing now. So you can really do that ahead. Okay, so there, I'm putting a little bit of the salsa. I have some tomato here, and I have Alcaparedo, yeah, it's a mixture of alcaparedo and it's a mixture where you have garlic slice in it, you have red pepper in it, you have olives in there. This is a classic Spanish mixture. And I'm putting some of it in there for the special accent. And of course, we don't want to forget saffron. And the saffron here is the stigma or the pistil of crocuses and it takes about 40,000 or 45,000 flowers to make a pound of saffron. So saffron is very expensive. 
and uh, but it goes a long way. So here, uh, the saffron will come from a different part of the world, in fact, Iraq too, but I think that the best one is probably the one from Spain, all right, and that's what I do. When I go to Spain at the airport, I buy saffron. Okay, so this is all mixed in there. And now I have to add my liquid. So the liquid there is chicken stock. And uh, the chicken stock doesn't really have any salt. I should test it. You can see the beautiful color. This is a copper kind of pile up pan and I would want to cook it in there and just serve it on the table into that thing, you know. We test it. I need a bit more salt. Okay, so that will come to a boil and the rice will come first for about 10-12 minutes before we put the shellfish in it and finally some peas at the end. You can put asparagus as well and so forth. So here I'm covering it. Okay. Next we stay in Spain there. We're going to do a classic uh, gazpacho and the gazpacho is the uh, quintessential summer uh, uh, soup, you know, cold soup, and when the garden is exploding with cucumber and tomato and pepper and so forth, and that's what we're going to do here. And I will start by peeling the cucumber. When you peel anything long like this, the first thing is to trim the end of it. And after you trim the end of it, you can hold it this way, and now you have a platform here, so you can do that with one streak. You know, one streak like that, and you make it pivot on your hand. This is the proper technique to peel something. Split in half. You can see the seed, though they are not seedless cucumber. Actually, even the seedless cucumber, frankly, I remove the seed. Okay. Now, to remove the seed, one of the mistakes often people go with the spoon like that and break the cucumber. Use the edge of the spoon, go around the edge. Uh, uh, and turn on the other side, on the other edge. That removes it without breaking the cucumber. Yeah? Okay. So, for this we need about maybe a good half a cup for four people there. We're doing a good half a cup of, uh, of uh, little diced cucumber, which are going to be used as a garnish when you serve your cucumber. So, here it is. Should be fine. First garnish. There. Okay. And the rest of the cucumber, I don't have to worry too much. I can cut it actually coarsely. So I can cut. I have garlic here, two cloves of garlic. I'm going to cut a bit smaller too. And I can start putting this in there. Okay, next, next ingredient in there, I have my cucumber, pepper. Now the pepper here, it's good if you can peel it, you know, and I can peel it with this, as you can see, this is, this is with our great vegetable peeler. And I can go all around and peel the pepper. Now, of course, you can see that I cannot go into the pleat where I have the pleat. So what you do after, you cut where you have the pleat here to remove this so that now, now I can expose the side here and finish peeling it. It is much better, certainly other garnish, to peel your pepper, you know. It's less important in the one who goes into the soup. But for the garnish, this is better to do it this way. So that will be my garnish. The rest I don't have to worry too much. I can break it into pieces. That goes in there. This one here, garnish of the soup. So this is the type of soup you do in summer, very refreshing, a kind of salad soup if you want. Okay, I have my second garnish now, right here. Remember they are peeled, does make a big difference. More, much more delicate. The skin, we have no use for it, more cleaning. Now, onion, so a little bit of the onion I want again, other garnish, so I want to cut it coarsely, or oh, I mean finely rather, 
this is, I have enough onion here. Now if I were to leave that onion like this, within 10 minutes, the sulfuric acid in onion is going to sting your eyes and it start discoloring, you know. So when you serve that as a garnish for a gazpacho or caviar or a steak tartare, any of this, you put that in a sieve and you rinse it under cold water. That's it. That wash out that compound of sulfuric acid and those onions will stay white and fluffy for like two days if I need it for two days. So drain them out a little bit. And I have nicely chopped onion here. Again, other garnish, that's my third garnish. The rest of it can go in there. That's enough. A little more onion for this. So we are building up, building up the gazpacho right here. Now tomato, same thing with the tomato. You know, I will use, well, you'll take the, the core of the tomato there. And basically, I'll put about a pound, pound and a half of tomato. Cut it in half. The seed and the juice, you know, I can put in there. And then keep a little bit of that for garnish. I may have enough with this. So the rest of it, again, cut coarsely. In there. Okay, that's plenty. Now I will cut this again as a garnish. Yeah, this is plenty. You want to serve about two, three tablespoons of the garnish per person. Be enough here. So you don't lose anything. Okay, this is the fourth garnish. Good. Now we're ready to make the soup. Salt on it. A lot of salt, pepper, and uh, and in this, as a liquid, I like to add a little bit of. Uh, you can put tomato juice, but I like to put Bloody Mary mix which is really spicy, you know, so that goes well with it. I've got a cup of it also, let's see. Oh, maybe a bit more. And olive oil. Cool. Now you could serve it just as such and it's perfectly fine. If you want to be a bit finer, then you can strain it. Strain it because there is still the seed of the tomato and so forth. And if I strain it, I do it into a food meal like this. And remember that the food meal is kind of rough on this side and this is the side that goes down this way, not the other side. This is the fine blade. There is usually three blades and those are very handy. I mean, I, I use them very often at home. Okay, three leg. But as I say, if you decide that you want it with a bit of seed in it, it's okay. It could be emulsify a little more actually. So that'd be creamier this way. Okay. Some people play tennis, some jog. I use a food meal. I use a whisk, that's what I do for exercise. Okay, that's about fine. So, clean up the bottom. Do it. Nice, smooth 
creamy mixture. I want to taste it. Mm, I think it's just about right. There is enough salt. There is enough everything. You can remove a little bit of the foam if you want. On top. Just for look, really. And that, of course, is more than enough for four people. Okay. Do we want to serve this? In there. I could actually... There is one portion. I will probably mess it up, but maybe not. Oh, here it is. And then you put, of course, all of the different garnish that we have here at the table for people to help themselves, plus some crouton, you know, that I have here. And what I do for the crouton, I cut a day old bread and I put a little bit of herb de Provence on top. The herb de Provence is a mixture of different types of herb, thyme, marjoram, uh, 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 basil sometimes, and sometimes lavender flowers as well, you know, and savory in there. I mix it in there, a bit of olive oil, and in the oven, that's a way of using your leftover bread. And it's great with that soup. Okay, yes, the soup is nice and cool. I like it cool, but not ice cold. And maybe a little sprig of, uh, of dill. Dill or something else in the decoration on top. And this is it. Now, I think it's time to go back to the paella. And let's see what's going on here. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think my rice is practically cooked. I can taste a piece of it. Mm, still a bit hard, but then now it's time to put the shellfish in it. So I have scallop here. Those are large scallop, as you can see. So four or five scallop or one per person. Now you can serve your scallop this way, or here there is a little a sinew, a kind of tendon which is on the side here. You can remove it, but it's fine in it too. Yeah. And then the shrimp, a couple of shrimp per person. I'm going to have here. The shrimp are in the shell, give me a bit more taste. You know, push them a little bit into the rice. And finally the mussel here. And my mussel, as you can see, for example, that mussel is up on here. If I bang it like this, and I see the mussel is closing. As you can see, it's closing here. So the mussel is alive. It's just that it's opening for air, so it's fine. So you can put your mussel on top. You know? I can increase the heat a little bit. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of peas in it, you know, the end. And the, the peas, those are a baby, tiny peas, uh, frozen. They are perfectly fine, those in a couple of minutes when uh, the shellfish start cooking. So this will take another a couple of minutes before the, the shrimp turn really red and uh, the muscle open. Give me a bit of color there. That's nice. And cook another minute or so. And with this, you know, I have an Italian wine here, you know, a Fiano from Puglia, but uh, with the paella myself, I would have a red wine. Should probably have a Tempranillo, a wine from Spain. This happened to be a Merlot from California and it will be very, very good as well. So I think that's what I'm going to taste, always taste it in case something is wrong with the bottle. It's perfectly fine. So I think I'll put a bit of parsley in there, just, you know, coarsely. Shop like this, and we are ready. The best way to serve the paella is to put it right in the middle of the table. Everyone help themselves. And, uh, and that's it. And it should be crusty in the bottom, which I hope mine is here. So here we are. The big paella for four is probably in the four, six, or eight. Okay, now the dessert. And the paella is pretty 
powerful and consistent, and we started with the gazpacho, uh, which it can be filling also with all the garnish. So we have a very simple fruit dessert here, and the fruit dessert is pineapple this time. Basically, my desserts are either fruit dessert or chocolate in one way or the other. Okay, so we'll remove this. This is a ripe, you want your pineapple to be ripe. When you get it, we actually need only half of that pineapple here. That half is okay. And you could use a small knife now to get all of the little eye out, the best ever that I've had was in Puerto Rico and in Guadeloupe as well, you know, some long one, long tube one, which are really good. So there, we're going to take the center core out of it. It's kind of woody in the center, although when I do it at home, my wife eat that first. That's what she like. Okay, and then we can slice it, thin slice, again you can do that ahead, you know. To marinate it or macerate it a little bit in there, what I like to put on this is really honey, and have a good honey here. This is a nifty uh, honey pourer, you know. And a few minutes, you know, the honey will e eventually melt, you know, with the rest of the ingredient. What I have is dark rum. The dark rum is classic with the honey. I have another eye here. So a little bit of uh, dark rum. You can actually, you know, mix all of your ingredients in there. But if you're going to marinate it for a while, you know, it's fine to do it the way I'm doing it. So, let's put a little bit of the skin of uh, lime on top of it. This is a, a great thing to use, you know, that uh, metro plane, it's called. And I can see the lime there, I can feel it in my hand. I know there is not much juice in that lime, because it's really hard. So if you want to have more juice, you drop it in boiling water for a couple of seconds, or you crack it on the table like this to try to crack a little bit of the fiber, or you put it in the microwave oven as well. Okay. Yeah, I can see sometimes they are really cottony. You know, very cottony, and you don't get much out of it. So you can start with this as well. Okay, here. Again, okay, a very fresh, very fragrant, very simple dessert. You would want to let it marinate for, for an hour or so. You know, it would be nice. And uh, then, basically what you want to do is just make a ring out of this. Nice ring of pineapple all around. That would be more than enough here. Some juice. And in the center, to gild the lily, as we say, a little bit of uh, mascarpone. And that's great. And you can serve that even with a little uh, piece of the lemon skin on top just for color, right there. That finished the dish. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, that menu was perfect for a party. And you can prepare ahead most of it. I mean, the gazpacho can be done ahead. This, of course, is even better when it's done ahead. And most of your paella can also be done ahead with, you know, the finishing at the end. So you have more time to spend with your guests and be the life of the party. Happy cooking. Visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. 
You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. KQED television production.